Giancarlo Giuseppe Alessandro Esposito is an American actor. He is best known for portraying Gus Fring in the AMC crime drama series Breaking Bad, from 2009 to 2011, as well as in its prequel series Better Call Saul, from 2017 to 2022. Wikipedia Born, April 26, 1958, age 66 years, Copenhagen, Denmark. Parents, Elizabeth Foster, Giovanni Esposito. Children, Kale Lynn Esposito, Ruby Esposito, Shane Lyra Esposito, Sir Lucia Esposito. Height, 1.73 meters Spouse, Joy McManigle, Divorced. Siblings, Vincent Esposito. Giancarlo Giuseppe Alessandro Esposito was born in Copenhagen, Denmark, to an Italian carpenter-slash-stagehand father from Naples, Italy, and an African-American opera singer mother from Alabama. His parents, working in Europe at the time of his birth, settled in Manhattan by the time he was six, and that's where he grew up. Coming from a theatrical background, it was, perhaps, inevitable that young Giancarlo would appear on stage sooner or later, and he did, at age eight appearing on Broadway as a slave child in Maggie Flynn in 1966. More Broadway work followed through the 1960s and early 70s, followed by some small roles in movies. TV work followed in the 1980s, with increasingly significant parts in a string of high-profile series until he became well-established as a character player both on TV and in a number of movies. He came very much to the public's attention playing Agent Mike Giardello in the TV series Homicide, Life on the Street, 1993, in 1998 and since then has rarely. Family Spouse Joy McManigal, 1995-2015, divorced, four children. Children Ruby Esposito Shane Lyra Esposito Kale Lynn Esposito Sir Lucia Esposito Parents Elizabeth Foster Giovanni Esposito Relatives Vincent Esposito, sibling Trademarks Often cast as Latino-American antagonists Trivia Was one of the chorus of children who sang the theme song of The Electric Company, 1971 his mother was doing a nightclub gig on a split bill with Josephine Baker, in Copenhagen, Denmark, around the time he was born. His mother was an American opera singer and his father was a stagehand and carpenter, from Naples, Italy. For a while in New York City, he was a roommate of Lawrence Fishburne. He was awarded a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame for television at 6351, Hollywood Boulevard in Hollywood, California, on April 26, 2014. Speaks Italian and Spanish fluently. Lived in Europe, New York City, and Cleveland until he, his older brother, Vincent, and their parents moved to Manhattan when Giancarlo was six. During the boys' teens, the family lived in Elmsford in Westchester County, New York. Is a member of the Atlantic Theater Ensemble, the theater company started by David Mamet and William H. Macy. Practices yoga and likes riding motorcycles and playing the saxophone. Won Obie Awards for his performances in Zoo Man and the Sign, 1981, and Distant Fires, 1993. Was a member of the dramatic jury at the 1997 Sundance Film Festival. Giancarlo Esposito and Aaron Paul appeared together many years before Breaking Bad, 2008, on Fury, 2006 is a supporter of Mumia Abu-Jamal and participated in the 2012 documentary Mumia, Long Distance Revolutionary, 2012. He has appeared in three films that have been selected for the National Film Registry by the Library of Congress as being culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant, Desperately Seeking Susan, 1985, Do the Right Thing, 1989, and Malcolm X, 1992. His last name is pronounced Esposito. Quotes My advice for achieving success is to make a career choice that reflects your passion. Then work your craft a little bit each day even if someone's not paying you to do it. Try to balance your social life with your educational or professional life and have patience. 1997 Accumulating money has never been a real goal for me. 
rather, I think about how to make every moment of my life mean something. What's been my barometer for success is my creative and spiritual growth, I measure my success by the quality of my work. Last year I sat down and re-examined things. I asked myself if I wanted to do anything and everything, just to get a lot of money. I decided I'd rather work and collaborate with people at the top of their craft. And my dream has come true. This year, I'm doing a picture with four Academy Award winners, director Robert Benton, Susan Sarandon, Gene Hackman, and Paul Newman. I started in the acting business at age eight, so I feel it's my experience and social skills for example, how to be charismatic, how not to lose your temper that have helped me the most to succeed. But I did develop a plan, I wanted to work with good people who had a passion for what they did. Still, at age 17, I made the decision to study the technical part of the business as well. I got a two-year degree in radio and television communication at Elizabeth Seton College in Yonkers, New York. I figured if I never made it as an actor, I could go to Alaska, be a cameraman, and collect a paycheck. It would be something to fall back on, but something I still enjoyed. I first felt successful when I was 13 and in a show called Seesaw. I came off stage and heard the applause of the theater audience and felt a sense of accomplishment. Around that time, my role model for success was Burt Lancaster. He was one of the first actors in Hollywood to start his own production company, and I respected him because he created something he believed in. Nowadays, I look to spiritual people, such as Mother Teresa and the Dalai Lama, since I'm always asking myself, what do I have to give? On a special award in 2014, I'm getting my star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, but I feel like my career has just begun. I'm in a place now that I can accept the love and accolades that comes with that star. But more than anything, it represents a new beginning for me. Now I feel like I can pick up the pace. On planning his demise in Breaking Bad, 2008, I said to Vince Gilligan, it's got to be something different, but it has got to be real. Look at what I do as Gus. I've developed this thing where I button my buttons, I look pretty dapper, and I fix my tie. And we both stopped and looked at each other, and we were off and running with an idea that proved to be probably one of the most visually satisfying and most gratifying deaths in film history. <laughs>